Heidgerian Terminology, Wikipedia Audio Martin Heidegger, the 20th century German philosopher, produced a large body of work that intended a profound change of direction for philosophy. Such was the depth of change that he found it necessary to introduce a large number of neologisms, often connected to idiomatic words and phrases in the German language. Two of his most basic neologisms, present at hand and ready to hand, are used to describe various attitudes toward things in the world. For Heidegger, such attitudes are prior to, i.e. more basic than, the various sciences of the individual items in the world. Science itself is an attitude, one that attempts a kind of neutral investigation. Other related terms are also explained below. Heidegger's overall analysis is quite involved, taking in a lot of the history of philosophy. See being in time for a description of his overall project, and to give some context to these technical terms. Terms Heidegger's idea of aletheia, or disclosure, was an attempt to make sense of how things in the world appear to human beings as part of an opening in intelligibility, as unclosedness or unconcealedness. It is closely related to the notion of world disclosure, the way in which things get their sense as part of a holistically structured, pre-interpreted background of meaning. Initially, Heidegger wanted Aletheia to stand for a reinterpreted definition of truth. However, he later corrected the association of Aletheia with truth. An assertion is apophantic. It is a statement that covers up meaning and just gives us something as present at hand. For instance, the president is on vacation, and, salt is sodium chloride are sentences that, because of their apophantic character, can easily be picked up and repeated in news and gossip by the they. However, the real ready-to-hand meaning and context may be lost. Being in the world is Heidegger's replacement for terms such as subject, object, consciousness, and world. For him, the split of things into subject slash object, as we find in the Western tradition and even in our language, must be overcome, as is indicated by the root structure of Husserl and Brentano's concept of intentionality, i.e., that all consciousness is consciousness of something, that there is no consciousness, as such, cut off from an object. Nor are there objects without some consciousness beholding or being involved with them. At the most basic level of being in the world, Heidegger notes that there is always a mood, a mood that assails us in our unreflecting devotion to the world. A mood comes neither from the outside nor from the inside, but arises from being in the world. One may turn away from a mood but that is only to another mood, it is part of our facticity. Only with a mood are we permitted to encounter things in the world. Dacian has an openness to the world that is constituted by the attunement of a mood or state of mind. As such, Dacian is a throne projection, projecting itself onto the possibilities that lie before it or may be hidden, and interpreting and understanding the world in terms of possibilities. Such projecting has nothing to do with comporting oneself toward a plan that has been thought out. It is not a plan, since Dacian has, as Dacian, already projected itself. Dacian always understands itself in terms of possibilities. As projecting, the understanding of Dacian is its possibilities as possibilities. One can take up the possibilities of the they self and merely follow along or make some more authentic understanding. Being toward death is not an orientation that brings Dacian closer to its end, in terms of clinical death but is rather a way of being. 
Being toward death refers to a process of growing through the world where a certain foresight guides the Dacian towards gaining an authentic perspective. It is provided by dread or death. In the analysis of time, it is revealed as a threefold condition of being. Time, the present and the notion of the eternal, are modes of temporality. Temporality is the way we see time. For Heidegger, it is very different from the mistaken view of time as being a linear series of past, present, and future. Instead he sees it as being an ecstasy, an outside of itself, of futural projections and one's place in history as a part of one's generation. Possibilities, then, are integral to our understanding of time, our projects, or thrown projection in the world, are what absorb and direct us. Futurity, as a direction toward the future that always contains the past that has been is a primary mode of Dacian's temporality. Death is that possibility which is the absolute impossibility of Dacian. As such, it cannot be compared to any other kind of ending or running out of something. For example, one's death is not an empirical event. For Heidegger, death is Dacian's own most, it is non-relational, and it is not to be outstripped. The not yet of life is always already a part of Dacian, as soon as man comes to life, he is at once old enough to die. The threefold condition of death is thus simultaneously one's own most potentiality for being non-relational and not to be outstripped. Death is determinate in its inevitability, but an authentic being toward death understands the indeterminate nature of one's own inevitable death one never knows when or how it is going to come. However, this indeterminacy does not put death in some distant, futural not yet, authentic being toward death understands one's individual death as always already a part of one. With average, everyday discussion of death, all this is concealed. The they self talks about it in a fugitive manner, passes it off as something that occurs at some time but is not yet present at hand as an actuality, and hides its character as one's own most possibility, presenting it as belonging to no one in particular. It becomes devalued redefined as a neutral and mundane aspect of existence that merits no authentic consideration. One dies is interpreted as a fact, and comes to mean nobody dies. On the other hand, authenticity takes Dacian out of the they, in part by revealing its place as a part of the they. Heidegger states that authentic being toward death calls Dacian's individual self out of its they self, and frees it to reevaluate life from the standpoint of finitude. In so doing, Dacian opens itself up for angst, translated alternately as dread or as anxiety. Angst, as opposed to fear, does not have any distinct object for its dread. It is rather anxious in the face of being in the world in general that is, it is anxious in the face of Dacian's own self. Angst is a shocking individuation of Dacian, when it realizes that it is not at home in the world, or when it comes face to face with its own uncanny. In Dacian's individuation, it is open to hearing the call of conscience which comes from Dacian's own self when it wants to be itself. This self is then open to truth, understood as unconcealment. In this moment of vision, Dacian understands what is hidden as well as hiddenness itself, indicating Heidegger's regular uniting of opposites, in this case, truth and untruth. The term being with refers to an ontological characteristic of the human being, that it is always already with others of its kind. This assertion is to be understood not as a factual statement about an individual, that he or she is at the moment in spatial proximity to one or more other individuals. Rather it is a statement about the being of every human, 
that in the structures of its being in the world one finds an implicit reference to other humans. We all live with others, and in fact we could not live without them. Humans have been called ultra-social and obligatorily gregarious. Without others of our kind we could not survive. Heidegger, from his phenomenological perspective, calls this feature of human life being with, and says it is essential to being human. We are inauthentic when we fail to recognize how much and in what ways how we think of ourselves and how we habitually behave is influenced by our social surroundings. We are authentic when we pay attention to that influence and decide for ourselves whether to go along with it or not. Living entirely without such influence, however, is not an option. Alethea A fundamental basis of our being in the world is, for Heidegger, not matter or spirit but care. All these ways of being in have concern as their kind of being. Just as the scientist might investigate or search, and presume neutrality, we see that beneath this there is the mood, the concern of the scientist to discover, to reveal new ideas or theories and to attempt to level off temporal aspects. In German the word Lichtung means a clearing, as in, for example, a clearing in the woods. Since its root is the German word for light, it is sometimes also translated as lighting, and in Heidegger's work it refers to the necessity of a clearing in which anything at all can appear, the clearing in which something or idea can show itself, or be unconcealed. Note the relation that this has to Aletheia and disclosure. Being, but not beings, stands out as if in a clearing, or physically, as if in a space. Thus, Hubert Dreyfus writes, things show up in the light of our understanding of being. Here is Martin Heidegger on philosophy as the task of destroying ontological concepts, in other words also including, ordinary everyday meanings of words like time, history, being, theory, death, mind, body, matter, logic etc. Heidegger considers that tradition can become calcified here and there. Heidegger then remarks on the positivity of his project of destruction. Apophantic Being in the world Dossian is a German word and is sometimes translated as being there or being here. It is the German form of the existential expletive, which, as in most European languages, is expressed idiomatically. Heidegger, after Nietzsche, used the word, but as a gerund synonym for human being or human entity. A Dossian is then a new coinage for a being that is there, in a familiar world, and in a mood. Dossian also has unique capacities for language, intersubjective communication, and detached reasoning. Heidegger does not want to get tied up with overused and ambiguous words such as person, consciousness, soul, or spirit, so Dossian is a new way of approaching something all of those other words point towards, but without the connotations. Dossian is the starting point of Heidegger's ontology. It is typically thought to apply to humans but it could apply to any being that fulfills the definition's characteristics which he states. What makes a being a Dossian is as follows, Dossian is a being whose being is an issue for itself, every Dossian has an a priori sense of mindness, or being one's self, Dossian is always thrown into the world, meaning it finds itself within a world, meaning no Dossian has ever been decontextualized. We are all world-bound, submerged, entangled, and engaged with our ontico-ontological surroundings through care, concern, and moods. Dossian has various modes of being in the world, which are the subject of much of Heidegger's analysis in being and time. Furthermore, 
average humans have a preontological understanding of being in so far as they understand what things are and that they are e.g. my dog is brown or today is Sunday. Heidegger believed that this pre-reflective understanding of being, that which determines entities as entities, helps constitute our unique existence as human beings, thus the coinage of Dacian. Being toward death Being with Care Clearing Destruction Hubert Dreyfus and Charles Spinoza write that, according to Heidegger our nature is to be world disclosers. That is, by means of our equipment and coordinated practices we human beings open coherent, distinct contexts or worlds in which we perceive, feel, act, and think. Heidegger scholar Nicholas Comprides writes, World disclosure refers, with deliberate ambiguity, to a process which actually occurs at two different levels. At one level, it refers to the disclosure of an already interpreted, symbolically structured world, the world, that is, within which we always already find ourselves. At another level, it refers as much to the disclosure of new horizons of meaning as to the disclosure of previously hidden or unthematized dimensions of meaning. The ontological existential structure of Dacian consists of thrownness, projection, and being along with slash engagement. These three basic features of existence are inseparably bound to discourse, understood as the deepest unfolding of language. Dacian An object in the world with which we have meaningful dealings. A nearly untranslatable term. Heidegger's equipment can be thought of as a collective noun, so that it is never appropriate to call something an equipment. Instead, its use often reflects it to mean a tool, or as an in order to for Dacian. Tools, in this collective sense, and in being ready to hand, always exist in a network of other tools and organizations, e.g., the paper is on a desk in a room at a university. It is inappropriate usually to see such equipment on its own or as something present at hand. Another, less prosaic, way of thinking of equipment is as stuff we can work with around us, along with its context. The paper we can do things with, from the desk, in the university, in the city, on the world, in the universe. Equipment refers to the thing and its usefulness possibilities, and its context. Aranus is translated often as an event, but is better understood in terms of something coming into view. It comes from the German prefix, er, comparable to re in English, and og, i. It is a noun coming from a reflexive verb. Note that the German prefix er also can connote an end or a fatality. A recent translation of the word by Kenneth Maley and Parvis Emad renders the word as a nouning, that in connection with things that arise and appear, that they are arising into their own. Hubert Dreyfus defined the term as things coming into themselves by belonging together. Aranus appears in Heidegger's later works and is not easily summarized. The most sustained treatment of the theme occurs in the cryptic and difficult contributions to philosophy. In the following quotation he associates it with the fundamental idea of concern from being and time, the English etymology of concern is similar to that of the German. Heidegger uses this word to describe the nature of Dacian's being. Beings unlike Dacian do not exist, they are merely objectively present. Dacian exists, chairs are objectively present. Two related words, existential and existential, are used as descriptive characteristics of being. To be existential is a categorical or ontic characteristic, 
an understanding of all this which relates to one's existence, while an existential is an ontological characteristic, the structure of existence. Disclosure Often translated as releasement, Heidegger's concept of Gelassenheit has been explained as the spirit of disponibilite before what is which permits us simply to let things be in whatever may be their uncertainty and their mystery. Heidegger elaborated the idea of Gelassenheit in 1959, with the homonymous volume which includes two texts, a 1955 talk entitled simply Gelassenheit, and a conversation entitled Zur Erdrung der Gelassenheit. Aus enem Feldwegesprach über das Denken or toward an emplacing discussion of releasement, from a country path conversation about thinking. An English translation of this text was published in 1966 as Conversation on a Country Path about Thinking. He borrowed the term from the Christian mystical tradition, approximately from Meister Eckhart. Dwarfenheit describes our individual existences as being thrown into the world. For William J. Richardson, Heidegger used this single term, thrownness, to describe two elements of the original situation, their being's non-mastery of its own origin and its referential dependence on other beings. Discourse Heidegger's later works, beginning by 1930 and largely established by the early 1940s, seem to many commentators to at least reflect a shift of focus, if not indeed a major change in his philosophical thinking which is known as the turn. One way this has been understood is as a shift from doing to dwelling and from being and time to time and being. However, Others feel that this is to overstate the difference. Heidegger himself held between 1 and December 4, 1949 at Bremen Club four lectures, which were repeated in the spring of 1950 unchanged at Berlerho. The titles were Das Ding, Das Gestel, Die Gefahr, and Die Care. The second and third lecture were reworked into a larger text in 1953 with the title Die Frage nach der Technik and in this form published in 1954 in the collection Vortrage und Aufsatze, which also included a slightly reworked version of the first lecture, Das Ding. In 1962, Die Frage nach der Technik and the fourth lecture Die Care were published together in a small book called Die Technik und Die Care, which is still in print. The Bremen lectures were published all four together, and in their original form, only in 1994 in volume 79 of the Gazam Toskabi. Heidegger uses the term ontic, often in contrast to the term ontological when he gives descriptive characteristics of a particular thing and the plain facts of its existence. What is ontic is what makes something what it is. Equipment Erinus Existence For an individual discussing the nature of being, one's ontic could refer to the physical, factual elements that produce and slash or underlie one's own reality, the physical brain and its substructures. Moralists raise the question of a moral ontic when discussing whether there exists an external, objective, independent source or wellspring for morality that transcends culture and time. As opposed to ontic, ontological is used when the nature, or meaningful structure of existence is at issue. Ontology, a discipline of philosophy, focuses on the formal study of being. Thus, something that is ontological is concerned with understanding and investigating being, the ground of being, or the concept of being itself. For an individual discussing the nature of being, the ontological could refer to one's own first person, subjective, phenomenological experience of being. A term used only once in a particular edition of Being and Time. In the text, 
the term appears to denote the possibility whose probability it is solely to be possible. At least, if it were used in context, this is the only plausible definition. With the present at hand one has an attitude like that of a scientist or theorist, of merely looking at or observing something. In seeing an entity as present at hand, the beholder is concerned only with the bare facts of a thing or a concept, as they are present and in order to theorize about it. This way of seeing is disinterested in the concern it may hold for Dacian, its history, or usefulness. This attitude is often described as existing in neutral space without any particular mood or subjectivity. However, for Heidegger, it is not completely disinterested or neutral. It has a mood, and is part of the metaphysics of presence that tends to level all things down. Through his writings, Heidegger sets out to accomplish the destruction of this metaphysics of presence. Presence at hand is not the way things in the world are usually encountered, and it is only revealed as a deficient or secondary mode, e.g., when a hammer breaks it loses its usefulness and appears as merely there, present at hand. When a thing is revealed as present at hand, it stands apart from any useful set of equipment but soon loses this mode of being present at hand and becomes something, for example, that which must be repaired or replaced. However, in almost all cases we are involved in the world in an ordinary, and more involved, way. We are usually doing things with a view to achieving something. Take for example, a hammer, it is ready to hand, we use it without theorizing. In fact, if we were to look at it as present at hand, we might easily make a mistake. Only when it breaks or something goes wrong might we see the hammer as present at hand, just lying there. Even then however, it may be not fully present at hand, as it is now showing itself as something to be repaired or disposed, and therefore a part of the totality of our involvements. In this case its being may be seen as unreadiness to hand. Heidegger outlines three manners of unreadiness to hand, conspicuous, obtrusive, obstinate. Importantly, the ready to hand only emerges from the prior attitude in which we care about what is going on and we see the hammer in a context or world of equipment that is handy or remote, and that is there in order to do something. In this sense the ready to hand is primordial compared to that of the present at hand. The term primordial here does not imply something primitive, but rather refers to Heidegger's idea that being can only be understood through what is everyday and close to us. Our everyday understanding of the world is necessarily essentially a part of any kind of scientific or theoretical studies of entities the present at hand might be. Only by studying our average everyday understanding of the world, as it is expressed in the totality of our relationships to the ready-to-hand entities of the world, can we lay appropriate bases for specific scientific investigations into specific entities within the world. For Heidegger in Being and Time this illustrates, in a very practical way, the way the present at hand as a present in a now or a present eternally, has come to dominate intellectual thought, especially since the Enlightenment. To understand the question of being one must be careful not to fall into this leveling off, or forgetfulness of being, that has come to assail Western thought since Socrates, see the metaphysics of presence. Resoluteness refers to one's ability to unclose one's framework of intelligibility, and the ability to be receptive to the call of conscience. One of the most interesting and important concepts in being and time is that of Das Man, for which there is no exact English translation, different translations and commentators use different conventions. It is often translated as the they or people or anyone but is more accurately translated as one. 
Das man derives from the impersonal singular pronoun man. Both the German man and the English one are neutral or indeterminate in respect of gender and, even, in a sense, of number, though both words suggest an unspecified, unspecifiable, indeterminate plurality. The semantic role of the word man in German is nearly identical to that of the word one in English. Heidegger refers to this concept of the one in explaining inauthentic modes of existence, in which Dossian, instead of truly choosing to do something, does it only because that is what one does or that is what people do. Thus, Das man is not a proper or measurable entity, but rather an amorphous part of social reality that functions effectively in the manner that it does through this intangibility. Das man constitutes a possibility of Dossian's being, and so Das man cannot be said to be any particular someone. Rather, the existence of the they is known to us through, for example, linguistic conventions and social norms. Heidegger states that, the they prescribes one's state of mind, and determines what and how one sees. To give examples, when one makes an appeal to what is commonly known, one says one does not do such a thing, when one sits in a car or bus or reads a newspaper, one is participating in the world of the they. This is a feature of the they as it functions in society, an authority that has no particular source. In a non-moral sense Heidegger contrasts the authentic self with the they self. A related concept to this is that of the apophantic assertion. Heidegger gives us four ways of using the term world. Note, it is the third definition that Heidegger normally uses. All citations referring to texts authored by Heidegger use HX to refer to the original page number. Gelassenheit Dwarfenheit Care Ontic Ontological Possibility Present at hand Ready to hand Resoluteness the one slash the they world.